Hey, boy Manny here. Welcome to the Garden Report. Back with another report out of practice. This one regarding Jalen Brown, who got asked after game four if he's the MVP of this series. It probably would have been a real question if the Celtics won that game and went up 3-1 in this series. Instead, a little more awkward after a loss and putting the Celtics' title chances here into question. Uh, but through no fault of Jalen's, Jalen setting great tones early in these games going after Draymond Green, utilizing his handle in an explosive way. Love the way he's played the game so far in this series, and they're going to need him to continue to be aggressive to get what they want done offensively. But similar story, we talk about this team's bad habits, whether it's turnovers, ball control lapses, settling for jumpers, some of the things that remind you of the Celtics earlier in the year. One of the things that we forget that we bemoan for a long time here on the Garden Report is Jalen getting lost in the shuffle after hot starts. Games three and four, he was just flaming hot in the first halves. And even in game four, coming out early in that fourth quarter with that 10 nothing push, getting out in transition, the three-point play with Marcus Smart flying in. He's getting downhill in transition. He's doing a ton with the ball, hitting shots, hitting tough shots at that. Now 77% at the rim in this series. There really seems to be no downside to going to Brown, and his turnover rate's even lower than Tatum's in this series, but lost in the shuffle again. Here's what Ime had to say about getting Jalen involved late in the game. Number two, just how can you continue to involve him into the later stretches of games? It feels like he usually does most of his work early, sometimes gets lost in the shuffle late in the fourth quarter. I mean, they they, they are switching some off-ball stuff, and, and we get some favorable matchups, but... Um, they're not guarding him the same as Jason. I think they're guarding him more one-on-one. -on -one. Um, and he obviously he's a high-level scorer that can take advantage of that. Um, putting Green on him on the perimeter a little bit, I think, takes Green out of his comfort zone. And uh, he's one of their best help defenders. So he's had some advantages there where they don't like to switch off ball. And uh, to your point, he's got it going early in the game. It's a, it's a balance and a mix, I think. Uh, ideally, we like to have Jason and Jason, Jason and Jalen both rolling at the same time. And so it's a mix of going to the guy that's being aggressive and scoring and getting the others involved as well. And I think that's obviously when we're at our best, if you've seen throughout the year, when they're in their high 20s or 30s together. And so it's a balance of that. But um, at the same time, our players got to understand we got to put them in position to get them the ball in late in game and understand the advantage that they have. And so it works both ways. At times, we've been a little stagnant and they're standing around when they can be more aggressive to get the ball. But as well, we can put them in some play calls to get, get the scoring errors as well. Now, Jalen talks a lot about going with the flow, playing basketball. Uh, I'm sure there's a part of his game that waits for his turn when it comes to offense in those spots. But he even said there's some onus on him to clean things up, uh, work on the spacing, a word he continues to use with this offense. Seems like he has a vision for how he wants to organize this. Now, Marcus Smart certainly does too, and Jason Tatum's always going to have the ball in his hand. So are there three kind of cooks competing in the kitchen in crunch time uh, to set this up, to organize, to play make? Celtics' benefit is that they have layers and layers of playmakers. Derek White talks about this a lot when I ask him about this topic. But the downside to that is that you have to pick one over the last four, five, ten possessions of a game. And more often than not, it's going to be Tatum. Now, that's where you get into a tricky area of settling, seeing a wall, seeing a crowd. Jalen, as Ime told me there, more one-on-one -on -one coverage for him. He might get the benefit of being able to see a guy break loose in the pick and roll, find Tatum, run a pick and roll with Tatum. Those are sets we really haven't seen in this series. So there's got to be ways for us to continue to see Tatum, Tatum, Tatum and Brown play off each other. They're at their best when they're doing it. Those sets almost always seem to work. And he may play calling, not the descriptive factor in his offense there's more of a free-flowing approach to this offense but in crunch time it does feel like the Celtics need to slow things down and get a little bit more deliberate get downhill get some shots at the rim and not go for nine straight jump shots in that stretch down uh, the end of the fourth quarter Jalen's absence there more glaring than anything and that's not the first time we've seen that this postseason here's what Jalen had to say about his approach in that spot Jalen I know you talk a lot about just playing basketball or going with the flow but when it comes to crunch time and you know you guys need to get a bucket there is there an onus that the coaching staff's putting on you to go get the ball because it feels like you have a lot of success early in games attacking being aggressive and then late in games sometimes getting lost in the shuffle 
Uh, not necessarily. Um, we uh, at times we get a little disorganized and when in, in crunch time and, and get a little sped up. And at times, I do need to take the onus and get us more organized and get us more space and a little bit more composed. And and that's a part of my growth as a basketball player and my maturity and, and things like that. Um, can't put everything on the coaching staff or on the floor. So at times, somebody got to be. Um, get everybody um, square, get everybody level-headed and, and be a little bit more composed. But, you no, know, we just got to be better as a group overall in those moments and just take our time a little bit and, and, and just be a little bit more poised. So Celtics certainly going to need more from Brown and Tatum when the series gets going again. Game five here in San Francisco. We'll have all the coverage. A. Shirai Blakely, Jose Pavone joining me tomorrow, and me, Bobby Manning, out here in the Bay again for the tiebreaker game in this series. There'll be a chance for whoever wins that to clinch an NBA championship back in Boston. We'll have coverage of everything. Still on media for pressers, Celtics All Access for continued practice reports, post game, and all the rest you're used to here. And, of course, show our sponsors some love. HelloFresh.com slash Playoff16. 16 free meals, three free gifts, instructions, ingredients. They're all in there along with fresh meats and other vegetables that you need to get those recipes done in a timely manner. That's what HelloFresh is all about. It all comes right to your door. HelloFresh.com slash Playoff16. I'm Bobby Manning here outside Chase Center. This has been the Garden Report. We'll talk to you tomorrow.